lanes I've been driving this train Years in this lane, there's no stopping this flame Cause I came to the game and I changed it to play How I like rearranged it to my own domain Yeah, I got what it takes, made lots of mistakes Taking shots, skipping breaks, feeling lost, feeling great Popping off, singing straight, never stop, never changed All the squad here to play and I've got something to say, yeah I work hard each and every day I get lost in the words I say I don't push pause, no I push play I won't stop till I make a change I withdraw on the things I make I turn flaws into flawless traits And action Welcome to Breaking the Cycle, episode 16 Breaking the Cycle is a live show on how to be a positive male role model and lead your freak family by breaking the cycle and changing the trajectory of your family tree so that you uh, so that you become the type of man your son would want to become and the type of man your daughter would one would one day want to marry. Got some hair sticking out. Looks like a horn. Yeah. Like a dip. Is that a demon horn? A devil horn? You're already like a little demon child. Breaking the Cycle, episode number 16. Anything else you want to tell us about the show? These are the types of conversations you should be having with your kids so they can learn to think for themselves and are not afraid to be themselves. So when they eventually, and they will be, are, are confronted with these life situations, what? they are not in shock and will have an idea on how to approach it. Are you just doodling over there? During a live show, you're over there doodling? No doodling. And, and no mumbling either. Crumbling. No, no crumbling under the pressure. Breaking the Cycle, episode number 16. We're going to talk about many different things. Today. As you know, we have our freak code, our core values, our freak code family values that we have up on the sign up there. What's the, what's the, number, what's the word for number one? All right, Mitch, you... you. Discipline. discipline. You have no discipline. You're over there doodling after I just talked about doodling. Oh. You've got zero discipline. <laughs> zero. Oh, it's funny to you. What's number one? Discipline. Number two. Energy. Oh, she could do them all, I guess. Oh, attack. Mind. Body. Mission. Listen. listen. Create. Win. Confidence. Okay, now you're just mumbling one after the other, trying to raise each other to it. I'll say them since you two don't have no. any discipline. Protect. Number 12, the last one, freak. All right, so you need to speak a little clearer and not racing to who's going to be saying each word because then now they don't even got any of those out of it. So the freak code is based off of the terms, the words, discipline, energy, energy. Attack, attack, mind. Body. No, I'm going because you two just mumbled it out. Body, mission, listen. Some of us have trouble with that one sometimes. I'm not saying names, but it rhymes with fridge. Hmm? And fridge. Cause I'm not going to say who it is because... Snitches end up in ditches. Exactly. Listen is number seven. Number eight is create. Number nine is win. Number ten is confidence. Eleven is protect. And twelve is freak. And that's what this show, Breaking the Cycle, is all about. That's what the free code overall is all about. And... We don't have our free code gear on today. We should have wore it for the show, but you should, you, you've should you seen the whole new line of free code clothing. Wait till you see the whole line that's coming out literally based off of these words of protect and discipline and energy and bring in the freak mother freaking fire. So today we're going to talk about a couple things about judging your or creating experiences, memorable experiences in your life, and how to break the cycle when it comes to what experiences you're going to remember, what experience you're going to create, and I'll explain that in a second. You guys want a joke? Oh man, what do we got? Oh boy, these are always these are always a mess. How do you make a varnish disappear? A what? A varnish. What's a varnish? I don't know. I don't know where I got it though. How? Huh? How? You take out the R. But what the hell's a varnish? I don't know. How the hell are you going to tell a joke with a word you don't even know what it means? Google. You should have done that before you looked it up, before you did the joke. How do you make a varnish disappear? What the hell? I don't know what a varnish is. The freak is a varnish. He, I think are you both just going to pick your feet this whole time? Because this, these know, things are just here. functified. What do you they mean are purely functified. Now, instead of doodling, now you're picking your neck. Ew. 
Your nasty, crusty ass feet. That's right for another joke. I know one can't hear you, so no. But then how come you know what I said right there? I didn't have a feeling right there. Are you guys ready for another joke? No, because you're mumbling still. Are you guys ready for another joke? Go. Why did the Border Collie protect America from other countries? <laughs> why did, why did the Border Collie... You'd be a good ventriloquist. Can you be a ventriloquist? What's a ventriloquist? The person has a puppet, and the puppet talks, but you can't see the person's mouth moving, but they're the ones really talking, and they're making the puppet talk. Like this. Look, check this out. I'm pretty good at it. Hey, you little bitch ass. You're a bitch ass. Who the fuck said that? Not me. I wouldn't say that. Who said that? You can't talk like that right here. F you, mother effer. See? Pretty good, huh? Yeah. What do you mean, yeah? Yeah. I'll punch you in the face. Why did the border collar protect America from other countries? Why? Because it's a border collie. It's the border of oh, America. Yeah. I'm just like laughing. Oh my God. Got the whole squad anyway, going. Anyway, let's talk about experiences and creating experiences. The, the sad truth is, and this is why we're breaking the cycle, the sad truth is, most people, most adults, and I deal with adults, mostly men, whether it's in the project or leadership and team development coaching or one-on-one -on -one private coaching, that the online clients, whatever it is, mainly in the project, it, it comes out to be that I'm seeing a lot of activity going on back here. He's throwing stuff. Well, because you're probably doodling again. I'm not doodling. You, you, have a whole you have a whole collection of drawings and shit over here. You've got to be regulated. Jeez, you're out of control. And my pen. How did my pen get over there? Me. So, most people, most men, here's the thing. All right, Mitch. Go. Mitch, stop. You can't just be drawing the whole time. You're not paying attention. Go ahead. What was next? What were we talking about? Yeah, what were we talking about? Hmm? You go ahead. You can say it. You're gonna, you're gonna piss us off in a second. See, that's a ventriloquist. You're gonna piss me off. We took, we took the cameras off. Your ass is mine. So, most people, and I'm speaking mainly about men, but I'm sure most people, it's, it's pretty fucked up that they, they think about their life in increments of different bad experiences, different catastrophes. They'll talk about bankrupt or abuse or whatever it is, that all their memorable experiences are freaking bad. And that's how they would look back on their life. That's how they would go through different times and different phases that they were telling you about say their autobiography and they're going to write chapters about their life. It would just be about all the bad experiences, which is pretty screwed up, which is why this is breaking the cycle. What's, 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 what's the biggest bad experience you can remember that you can think of? Putting mm -hmm. you on the spot here. Don't say anything weird. Let's see. Other than those feet. Oh my well, God. I tripped um, on a curb and I fell. That's your worst experience. Think about that. That's the worst, his worst experience. Like, that's what you want to have. You want your worst experience to be something so simple and basic as tripping on a curb. Like, not the shit that we hear from adults. It's, it's crazy. You should hear, like, well, that's I how people judge their life. I didn't go yet. Did you ever at, I don't know, can we say overweight jokes? Huh? <laughs> we go overweight jokes. Some people you ask, I'm not saying what, like, like certain people, and you're getting directions and they're telling you how to get somewhere. Like, say you want directions. They'll tell you, well... You drive up to the, when you see the Taco Bell on your left, go two more blocks, then make a right at the Burger King. And then when you see the Wendy's, some people give you directions, you know that? All based off of fast food joints. I'm not saying who or what kind of people, but I'm just saying people give you directions off that. Just like people give, talk about the series of their life in just negative experiences, bad, miserable experiences. That's what they have. So our goal with breaking, high five, thanks, man. All right, oh, we're going to get you. I'm explaining what we're talking about here. Jeez. Nice face. You look like you're sucking on a sour lemon and doing this. This little clicking thing. I Sit up doing. straight. She's like a granny. <laughs> Jesus. Come on. I'm like that. Did you just Don't say that live you. on TV? Uh, no. I would never say that or show that. That is just weak. What's up? You're, you do that every time. Weak? You can't handle like a 10 minute show? I can. Suck it up. I can handle a 40 minute show. What about 41, sucker? <laughs> okay. Oh. We keep distracting me and I can't get to the point. So we want to break the cycle that your life is remembered on fucking memorable, good experiences that you're never going to forget. That when you think of that moment, you think you remember what jokes you said that day, what was going through your mind, what food you ate that day, what someone's freaking feet smelled like, what clothes they were wearing, 
what you talked about, what kind of car you were driving, the, the, the way that you got there. So you want to think of that on experiences that you're going to remember the rest of your life. Good experiences. That's what we're looking to break the cycle here today. That's what we're talking about today is breaking the cycle of those bad, memorable experiences. Make and creating for you and your family and your kids experiences that they're going to remember for a lifetime. But the thing is experience that they want to fucking remember for a lifetime. Like what's something that you think you'll remember for a lifetime that you've done in your life? When Disneyland. We went to, when, okay, there's one. When we went to Costa Rica and we did the zip line. You got to speak a little higher. When we, when, we went to went, Costa, when we went to Costa Rica and went on the zip line. The zip line in Costa Rica. Like you'll remember that the rest of your freaking life. Okay, now can I say Saturday the bad thing? We just did. You'll remember the suffering Saturday. 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 Though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. The way we did the extra length and the extra distance and the way it sucked and all that. And we pushed a a freaking big ass red pickup truck up a hill with 14 people pushing as hard as they can and taking us however long to get it up there, like struggling. Like you will remember that forever. So what? And also you said like, think of the last bad thing that happened to you. And today, uh, the only thing that I can think of is that I lost a basketball game. You lost a basketball game? Yeah. And that's the worst experience you can think of that you lost a basketball game. I like it that losing something is like, shit, that's the worst experience that I lost because I want to freaking win everything I do. What's the other thing you say about good life, bad life? There's, I can't see the comments from here, but what were you saying about good life, bad life, good childhood, something? What do you say? Bad childhood, good life. So that's what breaking the cycle is about. So if you have a bad childhood, which we do not, we have a great childhood. But if you have a bad childhood like you did, you broke the cycle and you had a great life. So what if you have a good childhood like you? Does that mean you're going to have a bad life? No. Why not? Because, like... Explain it. Break it down. When you're, when you're little... What do you got? Let them, let them add it into it. You just, add something you could add more on top of that. Please do not copy me for what I said. Uh, what? If you have a bad childhood, you could have a good life. Well, uh, you could have a good childhood and still have a good life if you have, like, challenges and obstacles. I have... What? You. you can copy it. It's the same answer. You said part of it. Now he said part of it. You're both allowed to talk. No, but I, 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 you can add to it after. I'm sure you're going to have some brilliant words of wisdom to add after he's yes. done. Uh, yeah, like he I cannot see. comprehend what's going on up in this regional area of the dome. All right? So because if you add some challenges, you make some things harder, like a suffering Saturday, like the training that you do, like the different work you do around the house, like working and also learning how to earn money and working around the house. You're and doing supplements and, and laundry and all this other shit that you do, like... It's not necessarily bad, but it's responsibility. Like I've asked them many times, would you rather, and they have a lot of freedom as kids, I think, right? You have pretty good damn freedom, like of what you're allowed to do and whatever else, what you get in life. So I asked, would you rather me have very high expectations and push you a little bit and a little bit of pressure, but you're going to have this ultimate freedom and you get to make your own decisions? Or do you want it to be like a regular type thing where you don't have any of that, but you're not pushed and you're just average and mediocre? What would you rather have? High. You'd rather get high? What the hell are they teaching in these California schools? Don't get me started on what they teach in California schools. Do you guys ever hear of the guy Leah? No. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the swimmer? Oh my God. You, so you know about Leah swimmer. Thomas. So they have. You know, we won't even get into that topic. Just you better tr- mids. You just whatever sport you're gonna play tennis. Yeah. You better train hard. <laughs> because technically, I'm just saying, I'm not trying to get all controversial or anything. Technically, so how old are you? Eight. You're eight? Holy shit. I thought you were seven. Learn My something new every day. So technically, so you're eight years old. I could technically, technically, if I think and decide and start associating my adverbs or whatever it's called. What is it? Pronouns. Oh, my adverbs. If I start associating with... Being an eight-year-old girl, like, that's who I associate with. I feel, and you can't tell me I'm not, I'm going to come in tennis, I'm going to join your soccer games, and I'm going to whoop, I'm going to stomp a mud hole in them little seven, eight-year-old girls' asses. that sound fair to you? Yeah. I'm coming for you next, boy. You and me, I'm going to join a jiu-jitsu tournament. It's like... like, If if that's what my adverb is, if that's what my adverb is, then whatever. If that's what it is, then you can you tell me that I'm not? I have the freedom, like, right? I have the freedom. If you have a good life, like a good childhood, you can you still have a good joke? life. No, she's talking. Stop. That's rude. After this, I meant, you know. Okay, shut that. Sh- then. So if you have a good You're childhood. You're afraid she's going to say something more, like, smarter, intelligenter than, intelligenter than you. 
So if you have a good childhood, you can still have a good life. It's just that when you're little, your parents tell you to keep going and you have somebody to tell you to do it more if you stop. But when you're older, you're on your own and there's nobody to tell you to keep going except for yourself. So you just need to keep so going if you're just used or to, else you'll just get so if you're shut just, down. If you're just used to an easy, smooth, simple life when you're a kid and not challenged and not pushed and not someone telling you to do your damn homework, not when you're on your way to school the next morning, which should have been done the day before. Well, I already did my homework. Did you finish the homework yet from Christmas break? I remember you were still working on that for a while. No, I wasn't. You did? You got it done? Sure. Excellent. Good shit. Good shit. So, yeah, if, what, what do you think would happen? Let's, let's say you had this just got whatever you wanted as a kid, Easiest life, all the toys, went on vacation all the time. Great life, right? That'd be a pretty good life. Yeah. And that was it, but not really like that extra little nudge of push and a little bit of pressure challenging you and, and make you uncomfortable and make you deal with some some tough stuff sometimes. Once you're out on your own as an adult, what do you think you would be? Are you ever going to be out on your own as an adult? Well, I might. You two little shits better know where are you going to go? Where are you going? Are you moving I'm, out? I'm going to live Texas. with you until I'm 12. So you're 12? Yeah. Where are you going when you're 12? I'm going to buy an apartment. You're going to buy an apartment? How you the hell are you going to pay ID. for that? You don't. You got money. You got money. How are you going to buy an apartment when you're 12? Holy shit, I want to know on this deal. I'll pretend I'm like 30. No, I don't care about the age. I'm talking about the money. Oh, we'll make some cash out of you. Out of you. Some bread? Can I sell him? Some Tours. bread? Some bread? Yeah. You just start a hot air balloon thing like those people were talking about. Oh. So you need that. a bunch of money to start a auto. And you have to work freaking hard. It's not just as easy as, oh, we'll do that and run a couple of trips and get our bread back and call it a day. Anyway, so create those memorable experiences. Break the cycle of, of people just living their life. Like if most people, if they had to write a timeline of, of the previous years of life, say they were 30 and they had to pay, okay, write down a tick mark for one years old, five years old, 10 years old, 20 25. Stop kicking my chair. Whatever you're doing. Guess what? They would have had a tick mark. It would all be like, this is the day I did something negative. Negative. Bad experience. Bad experience. Disaster. Catastrophe. Finally got my college degree. Disaster. Because now you're going to be paying that debt the rest of your life probably. So that's what they would base off of. It's time to flip that shit and start making it be like, this is the day I went 800 feet or however, I think it was like eight, 800 feet or something in the air in oh, in Costa Rica doing like a mile long zip line head first at like, I don't even know, 40, 50, 60 yes, miles what? an hour. This little freak show zipping across so light that had to add extra yes, weights on her because we lied about her weight yeah, and some dudes out in the jungle that, that are just strapping us to the things. You can't keep talking when someone's talking. Like, that is just rude. They put no, I'm still talking. Oh, oh. Yeah. Stop. So that's what we're talking about here. And what else? We what else we got? Not we got a joke. Uh, yeah, oh boy, what do you got? Let me hear it. Not Let me hear it. Ten- well, I'll do no. one and then you can do one. Why is tennis such a noisy game? Because each player raises a racket. Oh my god. You said that you didn't get it. I told you the joke before. Oh my god, that is horrible. I got it. That's freaking horrible. I didn't like it. All right, so uh, besides the experiences, like we want to break the cycle on that, on how you look back, how you even rate your life. Then let's talk about it on your day. You, we've talked about it in other shows, how we, at the end of each day, we do decaf. We rate ourselves on decaf. Discipline, energy, confidence, action, freak. We give each one a score, one to five. So it's a total of 25 points. And then we'll discuss it. What'd you get today? What'd you get today? 23. Yesterday, I think I got a 24. You got a 23. Some days I get a 21. He's like, holy shit, you got a 21. But also, something I judge myself on is this. I'm in the middle of talk, in the middle of a sentence. You you can have your chance next. You can have your chance next. You know what I judge my day off of? Whether it was a good day or a bad day or not? Experiences. No. Us. When? Because you where am I usually when you come home from school? Usually. You run upstairs. Where am I usually when? Oh, in your office. School? Where though specifically? In, at your desk. Wrong. At your desk. Wrong. Over. I'm usually the there, and I see you out the window. Most days, except Most. Mon- or Wednesdays when I have Mondays. calls. Or, yeah, so usually I'm sitting in a, a chair right over here. It's the thinking corner chair where I do some work and I do some studying and do some personal development and reading and meditation, whatever, journaling. And it's out the window to the front. And so I see them pull in and I just say what's up to them, whatever, and they're coming into the house. But I could hear the footsteps running up the stairs. Wait. 
And depending on how fast those footsteps come up the stairs, let me know, am I doing a good job of creating those good memorable experiences or not? And some of us sometimes run to the... I hear footsteps... Someone's footsteps always run up the stairs. Fast. Like super fast. And they're like... Like a machine gun. Some days, if I started hearing it like... Boom. 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 It's like, hmm. Someone's not too enthusiastic, eagerly uh, uh, anticipating coming up to say hi to me. Maybe I'm starting to fuck up. Maybe I'm not creating those good experiences. Maybe the bad experiences are piling up. I don't know. So I need to check myself and figure it out. But someone's little mini footsteps I hear sometimes don't run up the stairs. Where do they run to? The pantry. Exactly. The, the, the panic room. Pan- we call it the panic room. The pantry. When did we ever in our life ever call it a pantry? In our, I've never I used that know. word in my life, neither have you. They call it the you panic room. It. The panic room. That's annoying. You're just off your game. I'm not off my You're game. You're like a Are you? Do you need a pillow? I need a pillow. Ready to fall asleep. Slap out of it. The panic room, this little one will run to go get some freaking food Popcorn. But some days I before don't coming to come and say hello. And, and we race each other sometimes. So the food, some, yeah, sometimes they will brawl to get up to who can get to my office first, knocking shit over, lamps are flying, teeth are getting knocked out, blood splattering everywhere. Ooh, real scary. So that's the point. Create those experiences that you hear those machine gun footsteps coming into the house. And creating a different timeline of events for the entire life. But the catch is you need to also create that adversity. That manufactured adversity. We use that term all the time. Manufactured adversity. Like the suffering Saturdays do. Like the extra additional chores. They have the big... I know you just going live on TV. I said... Yeah. People have died. I did a life. silent... Yeah. So... You two are very distracting. Okay, go. So... I don't even remember what I was saying now. I don't even know what I was saying. Russian, Russian's coming here with the rat. It's a Russian invasion. The Russian found the rat. Don't don't, don't come and distract. So this has been epic. Please remove from the premises. Remove from the premises. We are being distracted by Russians and rats. Get that thing out of. Get that thing out of here. Sit down. You're gonna fall. So, all right, we're being rudely interrupted and just ruining, ruining and destroying this show with invasions and interruptions. So the point is create a different timeline events, break the cycle, create better experiences that are going to be memorable. Don't live your life off of all the bullshit and the negativity and the drama. That should not be what you base your your existence off of. This has been Breaking the Cycle episode number 16. Anything you want to leave them with? Oh, I'm going to leave you guys with a joke. No! Move, you got to tell them bye. She she shouldn't have brought them in here. So take it in front of my face. Why wasn't the girl afraid of the shark? Because it was a man-eating shark. Oh, man. Anything you want to finish him off with? No! Excuse me! Very, very normal time to kidding about where you guys are from. You are fucking awesome. You are fucking awesome. You are fucking awesome. No excuses. I feel nauseous, believe me Never had a lot of shit come easy Had to work hard, struggle just to be me Had to rise